What I'm showing you today is how to make an awesome tool for improving the making process for future microcontroller and Arduino projects. This is an AVR ISP bootloader tool combined with a serial programmer. This board has female dip headers as well as serial breakouts. This means you can program a whole lot of different form factors. And not only that, by flipping a switch you can just as easily burn bootloaders to all of those chips. This is available either by inserting the chip into the tool or pushing the pogo pins into an embedded project. And one more thing, you know those embedded projects who use their own power source? like say a binary wristwatch, you can flip a toggle switch and either cut power delivery or supply the power from a custom source while you upload the program. All of these features come together in one neat package to simplify and streamline your Arduino projects. This video is brought to you by PCBWay.com, a low-cost and advanced PCB manufacturer with options like flex and semi-rigid PCBs, quick turn PCBs. You can also get PCB assembly and right now to give back to their community, they are having an ongoing sale where you can get 20 PCBs assembled for just $30. So this project, like any other electronic project, started by sketching out the circuit diagram to meet my requirements. First, I made a bare bones Arduino with the Atmega 328. This included the uh, required passives like resistors and capacitors and an oscillator as well as the serial communications chip which is the CH340G in my case. I also added a USB jack for easier programming. The DTR signal from the serial chip is what makes the microcontroller ready to receive the code. Without this, the Atmega wouldn't be programmed. I made sure to only connect the DTR signal to the target and not the master. This means you can't accidentally upload your code to the master if you forgot to flip the switch from the ISP serial mode. I made the necessary connections from this master part of the circuit to the three potential targets. Another Atmega 328, an AT Tiny, and to the breakout headers for the pogo pins. In the use case when you go from burning bootloaders to programming the targets, this switch simply connects the master reset pin to ground. This locks the chip in reset mode and is essentially the same as removing the master IC from the circuit. And now the serial signals will just move along to the target IC uninterrupted. To add some extra flair, I also used five operational amplifiers in two different configurations. According to the datasheet for the CH340G, the V3 pin should be decoupled with a capacitor when in 5 volt operation and tied to VCC when in 3.3 volt operation. I wanted this switch to happen by itself whenever the target voltage was changed and to solve this I use an op amp comparator. A comparator circuit will compare the voltage levels on the two inputs. Based on this comparison it will then set the output of the amplifier to either one of the supply voltages. For this op amp I set the output to the V3 pin then I set the two potential connections from V3 as the op amp power supply. V3 will either connect directly to VCC meant for 3.3 volt operation or it will connect to ground in series with the capacitor meant for 5 volt operation. So when the target voltage is set at 5 volts the inverting input becomes 4.3 volts after a drop from a diode. This is still larger than a 3.3 volts at a non-inverted input and the negative op amp supply is then set to the output. In other words, the V3 pin is decoupled to ground. However, when the target voltage is set at 3.3 volts, the inverting input is at 2.6 volts after the diode. This is less than the 3.3 volts on the non-inverting input, which means the positive op-amp supply is set to the output. And in other words, V3 is tied to 3.3 volts. So this was how to use the comparator op-amp. The next configuration is known as a op-amp buffer or a voltage follower. This is always going to mirror the input voltage directly to the output of the op-amp. But why would you want one voltage to always be the same as another voltage? Well, this is useful when you don't want to draw any current from the voltage that you are following. The non-inverting amplifier is made by connecting the inverting input directly to the output. The non-inverting input is then connected to the signal that you want to follow. The input voltage will then always be mirrored 
without any degradation of the original signal. I use this to make a couple of LEDs flash based on the serial signals. Now if I simply connected an LED to the communication signals, the LEDs would flash but the current consumption would degrade the signal itself and this means the target would not receive a clear programming signal. However, in this case, I did make a wrong connection. This is because serial communication signals are active low. So a non-inverting buffer will keep the LEDs always on, but flash off when the signal is transmitted. This is the opposite of what I wanted. So the two inputs should have been switched. I fixed this in the Gerber files, but I did have to add a couple of bodge wires to the PCBs I had already ordered. If you want to learn more about op-amp theory, I'll be linking a couple of great videos from the EEV blog and from Great Scott in the video description. After the circuit diagram was drawn and the PCB was laid out, I continued the project by soldering the components and bringing all the parts together. The pogo pin adapter is made by breaking off the pin holder and soldering both the pogo pins and male headers. And here's a pro tip. When soldering the pogo pins, put a piece of paper between the PCB being soldered and a couple of offset PCBs. These offset PCBs gives a nice distance for the pins, while the paper means you'll still be able to remove the main PCB when all the pins have been soldered. While soldering the main circuit, I started with all the low profile components, like the SMD passives and integrated circuits, and moving on, I placed the bigger components like the USB jack and oscillator before finishing with the male and female headers. So you may be wondering why I'm using a mini USB connector with a whole host of uh, smaller connectors available. Well, the other real options were either USB-C, which would have been nice, or micro USB. USB-C would be uh, cool to add, but the connector is uh, a bit too fine pitched for comfort. And while micro USB is okay to solder, it is not really that mechanically strong. It can't handle the same regular use as the mini USB, which has four mounting pads, as well as a couple of stress relieving pins, which helps when inserting and removing the USB cable. So in short, I went with mini USB because it's easy to add to the circuit and it's reliable in use. So the motivation behind this project was to never again have to make an Arduino on a breadboard to flash a bootloader. Now, I could do it one last time just for this project, but instead I just used an Atmega from an Arduino Uno I had at hand. I flashed the Arduino ISP example sketch to the Uno, then I placed this Atmega 328 in the master position, and put a blank at mega in the target position. Now I could use the tool as it was intended. First burning the bootloader to the target, then I switched modes to the serial programming and uploaded the Arduino ISP once more. Now this target IC was ready to act as a master and I removed the original Arduino Uno at mega and put it back in its place. Then I moved the newly flashed ISP at mega from the target to the master position. The tool will now be able to both burn bootloaders and flash your code to blank targets. After adding a yellow header, which connects a 10 microfarad capacitor from the master reset to ground. Now the circuit is finished and to burn a bootloader or upload a serial program to an in-circuit target, just repeat the steps I just showed you. To program an embedded microcontroller, attach female header wires to both the main circuit and the pogo pins. Now you can simply press these pogo pins onto your embedded target and program with ease. Uploading a sketch to an ATtiny is pretty similar to burning a bootloader. Insert a chip into the uh, ATtiny dip headers, or you can use the ISP headers. To upload the code, select Upload using Programmer in the Arduino IDE, and keep the toggle switch in ICSP mode while doing this. Now for quickly changing between 5 volts and 3.3 volts, just flip this switch over here, and if you want to either cut power delivery or use a custom power source, you can flip this third switch and supply power through these male headers. So that's the different modes and use cases for this tool. I hope you liked it. I know it will make a lot of new exciting microcontroller projects a lot easier going forward. And as always, you will find all the detailed files uh, and parts used in the video description.
Now, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, all of that good stuff.